another Friday and we're out here in the glorious outdoors. Hooray! Not sure how the camera is going to cope with this uh, light and shade. I still can see more of the plants and less of me. That's a good thing. Um, immediately we have problems. That's not you, is it, Trev? Trevor Joy is one of our commenters. He's the only one that admits to flying out to our local airport, Staberton. So he has to take the hit for everybody. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's been worse this morning. Right, now. I've got a lot to get through again today, as per usual. And a, a week away from each other now. How, how have you fared this week? Has it been a good week? I hope it has for you. I hope everything's ruined, ticking along quite, uh, quite nicely. Wherever you are in our great and glorious little world. Right, matters are rising. And uh, the first matter is from Vintage Trains and Abandoned Railways, uh, Ron, who says, uh, Ron lives by uh, Hook Norton, or within range of Hook Norton, uh, which you may remember was uh, the place we went to visit. It had those huge great pillars, massive great uh, pillars where a viaduct went across. Suit so architectural, they were beautiful. Um, and Ron says, if you get time, have a look at the channel run by Tom Scott. His video of the last remaining industrial ropeway in Britain is fascinating and may well show you how they got the coal from the railway to the kiln at Hook Norton. Yeah, Ron's been looking around there at the old kiln site, seeing what, what's, uh, what you can get to. So, Tom Scott then, look at his video on the last remaining industrial ropeway. Give that a shot. James Weeks, Canada. Well, James has been out and about, a bit rare for him. There was a passenger railway to the former mining town of Cobord in northern Ontario until it was replaced with a bus about 10 years ago. Sigh. <laughs> You're just going to be winding up in it, does James? The railway station there is now disused and up for sale. If only I needed an old railway station. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> no, don't do it, James. Don't do it. He said, I'm sorry you have to worry about a driving test. Can't you just show them the video of you driving at high speed that got so many comments back a while? <laughs> Do you remember that one? of anyway, yes. I, I'm not quite sure you've got the right idea about this uh, driving in this country, James. I can't, I can't see that one working. <laughs> Charles Patterson. He says, good luck on your relicensing. Here in the States, there is no retesting. Ah. He said, my father kept his licence until he passed away at 99 and a half years. Crikey. When a couple of my sisters suggested he should give up his licence, you didn't volunteer for that then, Charles. <laughs> I don't blame you, mate. He said, when a couple of my sisters suggested he should give up his licence due to diminished capabilities, he wouldn't hear of it. As he insisted he was more than up to par, he was deaf in one ear and blind in one eye. <laughs> Fortunately, he chose to restrict his radius of travel, and as time went on, until he just didn't use his car anymore, or those last few years. Oh, there you go. So, in America, just keep going. Well, that didn't surprise me. Uh, on the film on the film club on the last vlog, Gloucester Cathedral, and that uh, building continues to impress a lot of us. I think David Bellani from Spain, sunny Spain. So that was a lovely tour around Gloucester Cathedral. I often find myself taking pictures of the stonework on such trips. It was amazing, wasn't it? What the Masons did there, absolutely amazing. He said, it's a good moment to introduce you to Albert. He was found by my grandparents in the Hartford countryside and lived with them for many years. And when the time came, he moved in with my mum and dad. I had him for a couple of years, but now he provides a perch for robins in my parents' garden. What? I, what am I talking about? Well, Albert is the stone bust that I use as my avatar. He's the one on the left-hand side. <laughs> Just in case you wondered. <laughs> ah, good old Albert. Now, David also goes on to explain, in Spain, your license lasts for 10 years and then it has to be renewed. This renewal period reduces to five years after the age of 65. Oh, they're careful, isn't it, aren't they? and is subject to a medical. In fact, you have to have a medical to obtain the license in the first place. Although in my case, it was just a case of exchanging the UK one for the Spanish one. Yeah, presumably you'll come under the net now though, David. Yeah, it sounds a bit strict, doesn't it? 
Peter Smith. Thanks for reminding me what treasures we have on our doorstep. My last job was just across the road from the cathedral and many a lunchtime I used to visit to escape the turmoil of my workplace. Yeah, I did the same. I used to uh, work within walking distance of the cathedral and often we would go uh, down and just sit and listen to the quiet for half an hour and then they started charging for admission. I don't think they do anymore, I think, but uh, they ask you if you'll make a donation, which I think is a better way of doing it. You shouldn't exclude people, should you, for a place of worship? And Mark Schroeder says, Thanks for all your talks and walks. Always lead me to hours of further meandering around YouTube, Google Earth and Wikipedia. Brilliant. Yep, I approve, Mark. See what else you can find out. I just skimmed it on the top me. There's so much more to find out. Peter Payne says, can't blame Trevor on that one because he didn't fly helicopters, I don't think. Do Trevor you fly helicopters as well? Peter Payne says, I just can't imagine the skill, the level of skill of people living such a long time ago. It just doesn't seem possible, but it's there for all to see. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a wattle and door mud hut just outside the or just within the city bounds, and you walk in and you see that, what must the impression that must have given? It must have been almost frightening, the, the height of it. You must have thought perhaps it was going to fall down. Absolutely amazing. I did hear or read somewhere that to build it, they actually filled it up with mud as they progressed. Rather than have scaffolding, they just built mud ramps everywhere. It sounds feasible, but Christ, that's a lot of mud, isn't it? Unless they did it in little bits and pieces, I suppose. It did take a long, long time to build. Ah, yes. Yeah, old uh, Mike says, how truly lucky we are to have an amazing structure, such amazing structures and spaces to admire and wonder at. In their day, they would have been at the cutting edge of their technology. Yeah, they must have been stunning, mustn't they, uh, way back then. Harry go for our assignment. Can I blame that on you, Trev? It was quiet as anything before I started filming. We hadn't had an airplane for ages. It's going away. Well done. Simon. Our Harry Golfer uh, channel colleague. He says, The cathedral is a regular point of call for me when in town, but I must have been born awkward as I always go around anti clockwise. Simon born awkward? No. Perish the thought, Simon. <laughs> Not you, mate. He said, I think my first visit was in 1974, wearing a Boy Scout uniform and some short trousers. Oh, wish you hadn't told me that. Some things cannot be unimagined <laughs> oh dear. I'd like to tell you about my only official visit for the phone line. Telecoms engineer our uh, Simon. Halfway up the right hand side of the cathedral you will find a little gate that leads down into the bowels of the structure. As you know uh, the water table around the cathedral is very high and it doesn't take a lot of rain to see these lower rooms flooded. It plays merry how with the phone and the electrics. Yeah, I bet it does. Don't work too well underwater do they? From that deep dark hole, and goodness knows how many bodies have been buried in the walls, hmm, yeah. I was taken to a small door on the opposite side of the cathedral and went up perhaps one of the steepest, most torturous spiral stairs I have encountered to the rooms above. I was given a full tour of the bookcases in it, full of books 1,000 years old, 1,000 years old. You've got a direct connection there through a book. With these treasures in my view, I wondered how much of our history was lost when cathedrals were bombed and burned in World War II. Yeah, we must have lost a lot, mustn't we? Crikey. Yeah, this was pre-Harry Potter, because Harry Potter, um, a lot of that was filmed in and around Gloucester Cathedral. I'm very grateful to the priests there who showed me their treasures. It's not something ordinary people see, and I feel privileged to have seen them. And all that for making a phone ring. Yeah, oh <laughs> wow. Brilliant. Barry C. One, you may have started a new trend, not air guitar, but air ablutions. Many a boy has splashed his towel in the hope his parents think he's had his bath. <laughs> I wouldn't dare comment. <laughs> Martin Hall. Martin always gives us uh, a different viewpoint. Martin Hall. Hello, Ron. The beauty and splendour of Gloucester Cathedral seeps through to one's inner soul. The majestic splendour just oozes out of every part of the cathedral. The peace and serenity that one feels 
whilst walking around is in complete contrast to the world we live in. Sadly, as mere mortals living in a world of war and starvation, we find solace in such places. Whether we have faith in a higher power or follow religious order is completely up to the individual. For me, I can find peace and contentment in such a beautiful place. Martin obviously appreciates it. Jim Nichols. Now, turn away. Jim Nichols. I have to prepare myself for this one. I look at it and I'm starting, I'm starting to lose it already. Trevor. <coughs> right. The cathedral is surely a beautiful building, Ron. It's just a pity that old duffer pretending to wash his hands stuffed it up. <laughs> An old duffer pretending to wash his hands, stuffed it up near the end, and then has the effrontery to display his knees in the garden. Shocking! <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Right, get a grip. <laughs> uh, yeah. Harry Brown says, I'm glad I don't do the dusting. Yeah. <laughs> You're quite right. Now the uh, the film last week's film. Let's move on. Let's move on to that for goodness' sake. There's a helicopter again. What's going on? Jim Nick was again then. Another great video. I hope the intermittent audio problems were microphone related, and not any vocal impediment on the part of the commentator. I unreservedly. Uh, wish to beg your pardon for the uh, audio on that. Uh, I was trying to find a way to cope with the uh, the traffic noise which in a built-up area is uh, quite uh, quite difficult to do really and uh, I obviously didn't do it very successfully. Really I suppose uh, I should have done a voiceover. The thing is that on the editing software it didn't seem too bad. It wasn't until I rendered it to the proper film that it didn't seem too good. Anyway, I hope you'll forgive me for that. James Weeks says, We'll never have anything old here. This is in uh, Toronto, Canada. When things start to get old and interesting, they tend to rip them down and replace them with 60-story glass boxes. Yeah. Now, James is, is an aspiring gardener, trying to get his garden into order. And then he uh, writes... OVM, that's the official virtual mascot, our Sumac, who is the channel mascot. Morning, Sumac. <coughs> that OVM and I are now playing Find It in the Garden. She, reluctantly, drops the ball close to me. I grab it, and before before she can, and then with difficulty, because she's so excited, <laughs> this paints a picture. <laughs> with difficulty, because she's so excited, I grab her, cover her eyes, and then throw the ball among the plants. Then I say find it and let her go and she hunts around for the ball and seems to enjoy the game. So you throw it amongst the plants and Sumac goes out there digging around for it. I'm not quite sure you've got this gardening thing nailed yet. Um, James, I think you've got a bit more work to do. <laughs> uh, Ron from Vinci's Trains and Abandoned Railways again then. <laughs> I'm struggling with this this week. Vinci's Trains and Abandoned Railways. Shrewsbury is a favourite of mine, lots of history. The only fly in the ointment is the very large and very old mulberry tree in the Abbey grounds. Each year this is festooned with lovely black mulberries which all fall to the ground and rot away. All that mulberry wine gone to waste. <laughs> Get your priorities right, Ron. <laughs> Martin Hall again then, giving us a more calm down view perhaps. Oh tantalising Tewsbury Town, to walk through your streets and alleyways brings a sense of your history up to the present time. One wonders what tales you could tell of your townfolk, the different industries that have come and now sadly gone. But all is not lost. Today Tewsbury is a vibrant, forward-looking town with a proud past and a forward-thinking future. This is one town not to be missed. There you are. Get and have a look. Peter Smith, 
Ron, another of those coincidences. Today we, my wife and I, were on grandparent duty. Oh, well done you. And we had already planned to take the kids to a favourite spot of ours. That's Tewkesbury. Well, there you go. Well, that is a coincidence, isn't it? So I'm having a rest from scribe duties. And the terrible two, Jasmine and Oliver, will be commenting this week. Oh, right. OK. Here goes. Thank you, Ron, for such an interesting walk. We retraced your steps, remembering to look up instead of down. Oliver liked the plague burial ground. Well, Oliver would. <laughs> and I like the hot pole. Dad likes it too, as it's a branch of Weatherspoons, noted for its cheap food and beer. <laughs> Priorities again. Well done, Peter. <laughs> the second-hand bookshop is also my favourite. I managed to pick up a horrible histories book, which I had not read. Horrible histories? We did, however, miss one important shop. Oh, did, oh I do apologise. I missed an important shop. I look quite hard. Which one was that then? It's the one that sells so many varieties of ice cream just by the river. Ah, I see. Yes, well, that was an important uh, shop, wasn't it? Yes. I shall uh, go and visit that, I think, anytime soon by the looks of it. And then she says, thank you again for posting this one. Jasmine, my pleasure entirely. Thank you very much for going to the effort to let us know what's going on. Thank you. Trevor joins them. Our Trev. See, he's gone quiet now, so we can read his bit in peace. With regard to your point about why the church is an abbey, perhaps I can shed some light on it for you. An abbey is more of a monastery, whereas a church is more akin to a cathedral. Ah. So, Shrewsbury has been a place of worship since the 7th century. And then Trevor goes on and looks into all the history. Got the neighbours running up and down the road now. This is, this is getting worse. <laughs> So Trevor then goes into all the history and tells you what happened, why it happened and everything that you could possibly know about it. What I suggest is if you ever think of uh, visiting the Abbey, read Trev's, um, read Trev's comments first. You'll save yourself the cost of a guidebook because it's that detailed and it's that, that good. Thank you Trev. Harry Golfer, Simon again. I'm sure somebody has already mentioned that the large Norman window in the Abbey is the largest Norman window in England. Ah, no, as far as I'm aware, nobody has mentioned that, Simon. That's amazing, isn't it? The largest Norman window in England. Wow. Philip Pankhurst. My wife and I spent some time in Tewkesbury in the early 70s, when it was a lot quieter than it is now. It seems to me that many visitors spend an hour here while en route to somewhere else. Yes, well, I think they, after an hour the car parking charges go up, don't they? quite uh, dramatically, that might explain that. The town therefore sees little benefit, which is a pity because there's so much to see here for those who know how to look. The Abbey is one of the finest churches in the country, with monuments surpassed only by Westminster... What's going on? Uh, with monuments surpassed only by Westminster Abbey, with some amazing stained glass. However, the town would still be a gem, even if Henry VIII and his barbarians... <laughs> I've flattened it. <laughs> Henry. I know, are you ready for that? <laughs> this has been some good comments this week, guys. Keep it up. Graham S. Which is our Graham then. Nice to visit one of my old places of residence when growing up. My dad had a carpentry shop in Abbey Mill Lane, next to the mill. You can just spot the doorway at 3 minutes and 23. The abbey is called an abbey for some reason because it was part of an abbey but then when King Henry VIII decided to dissolve the monasteries over some argy-bargy with the Pope about his bit on the side, <laughs> the townspeople had a whip round and bought the church from the Crown. I'm sure the local museum will have a lot more details on this. So that's what I remember from being at primary school there in 1971 anyway. <laughs> I don't remember the history being explain, explained quite like that. But <laughs> That's accessible history, isn't it? He decided to dissolve the monasteries over some argy-bargy with the Pope about his bit on the side. <laughs> right. The um, film club this week. Film club this week is a uh, trip to Toddington. And I've just realised I've had my wrong glasses on. Sorry, guys. Oh dear, sorry about that. 
Uh, right, so this week's film club is, and there's you go away, thank you. This, well, this week's film club is um, Toddington Railway, the old uh, Gloucester and Warwickshire Heritage Railway. I'll have a look around there. I haven't aired this one in a while, so we'll give it a go for train buffs. And then next week, staying with trains, we'll go to Colford Railway Museum. It's a little gem, this one. If you're planning to go down to the Forest Dean at any time, try and make a little bit of space in your itinerary to slip this in. Because as you'll see, you can spend hours there if you want to look in detail at all the bits and pieces that are going on. So, we'll go down there and have a mosey around then. I'll meet you down in Colford next Friday and don't be late. The Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Steam Heritage Railway. This is my local. I've filmed it quite a number of times, so it's uh, difficult to find a, a new look, as it were. But, uh, I've given it a go.
as it were. Let me know what you think. If you go onto my channel and click on videos, you can compare it to some of the other efforts. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would be very nice if you did. Don't forget to click the notification bell to get updates. And it would be nice to click like and share. Thank you very much. I'll catch you on the next one.